Have you ever wanted to make your own cash envelope wallet? Well, here's your chance to look at how to make one whilst I take you along the journey with me. So you're gonna get a blank, a blank new canvas, here we go. Then you're going to click on the square shape and build a square. If you want cornered edges, that's up to you, or sharp. Now the width is 5.84 by 2.78 inches. That's what I've done and I'll post them on the screen now. Then the inner width is 5.06 by 2.09, give or take. Then you can press your centering tool to make sure that they're both centered together, which is at the top of the screen. This is then when you can choose what wording you'd like in the middle. Originally I was going to write Tyler, then I changed my mind and I did postage because I go to the post office every single day uh, and I thought it'd be a pretty good one to have in my purse. You need to choose which font you'd like. Bearing in mind if you're selling these, make sure you've got a creative license to be able to sell them. If not, Go and find one, go and find, there's loads on Etsy for you to look at. Group your wording together and then make it the desirable size that you'd like and make sure it's centered with that lovely little icon at the top. Now, at the top, I wrote the word postage again and chose a different font and I centered it at the left hand side Obviously, if you're making multiple at the same time, you'd want this bit to be at different parts of the envelope. So you'd want it to be in the middle, at the right, depending on how many. It's like a staggered system, so that only you know that part and, and how you want to do that. So I'm just placing it at the side. There we go. Too big, so I'm going to make it smaller. So I'm connecting my Cameo and I'm making sure that all of my outlines, the colour that I've chose, which is red, are going to do a vinyl by two, which I'll post on the screen now what that setting is for you. Now, just because it works for me doesn't mean it's going to work for you. I have taken ages to find my correct settings for stickers, vinyl, card and then something changed and they were all wrong again I had to do it all again so it, you will have to think about what works for you and have a go and test it out okay so I've set my uh, cameo to print I've cut out the desirable measurements of what's on my screen and my vinyl that's needed and my mat isn't sticky anymore so I use sellotape just to save a bit of money I sellotape each area four sides and it sticks like a dream instead of spending lots of money buying new ones because I print so many stickers out and cut so many stickers and, and card it just it doesn't last long at all for me but that's what I do obviously you do what you need to do once I've stuck all this down I will then insert it into my cameo and I will press send So it's now in the Cameo and it's going to cut it out for me. Obviously, as I've already previously said, make sure you have a bit of vinyl to test your settings so you're not like me and waste so much vinyl because it's not actually cutting all the way through. It's the worst nightmare for any crafter for that to happen. Okay, it's all done, we've got it out of the Cameo and I am using an eyebrow plucker because I couldn't find my um, stick thing that you use. You can get them at Amazon, there'll be a link down below if you're interested in buying them. They're very handy and I just couldn't find them recording this video and I just wanted to get it out. So luckily for me, it's all cut out correctly and I'm just peeling off annoyingly because I put my sellotape on, it caught the edge. We'll fix that, no worries. Um, so it all cut out fine, my settings are on point, and yeah. So I'm so sorry that it's off camera. I had a little fiddly bit and I couldn't do it properly, and because of the sellotape, I was trying to cut that bit off. Blah blah. But I'm hoping we'll be back in a minute. Right, here we are. So 
We're now going to take off the inside of the top bit and then we're going to go and remove the vinyl from the inside. Okay, so I'm pulling the inside of the vinyl out because we want the words. So we're taking away the negative space that we don't want in our envelope. So if you do want the background and don't want the words, you're going to have to take the words out rather than the background of what I'm doing here. That can now go in the bin, we don't need it. But then I did think the other day we could potentially use that for something else. I don't know how you do that, but yeah. So I'm taking the inner bits out, which I find them everywhere. Everywhere I go, they're stuck to my clothes, stuck to the sofa. very tedious but <laughs> totally worth it right there we are finished obviously the little bit of the side where the cellar tapes caught is really bugging me but it is what it is so you need some transfer tape it can be any make I'll use a Cricut because I just find it works better you're going to lay the transfer tape over the top of all of your vinyl that you just cut out so you're going to lay it flat on it and make sure it sticks to the vinyl tape I also use a Cricut spatula thing to make sure that it, um, so you rub, 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 and obviously don't rub too hard because you make accidents like I do in a second. I call it a spatula, I don't actually know what they're called, so if you know what they're called, comment down below. So, okay, so the next step is quite complicated, so make sure you're listening carefully. I've got a small pouch, a laminating pouch, and I'm cutting the top end off. Where it connects together, I'm cutting it off. This is where you're going to invertly flip them both inside out. So normally, the glossy sides on the top, you want the glossy sides to both be inside. Glossy sides inside. You want the matte finish on the outside. Once you've done this, then you can get, get rid of one and use one and it's on the matte side you're going to place this is where I mess it all up I rub it too hard and I basically smidge the A um, at the top bit because half of it's stuck and half of it isn't so here we go look there I've, I've boshed it up there but it doesn't matter because it's just to show you but make sure it's really secure on and then you're going to stick this onto the matte side of the laminating sheets i can't say this enough if it's on the wrong side it won't become a pouch you'll just laminate it like a normal laminator so this is a really important step for you to remember you want to stick this onto the matte side And slowly we eventually get there it just takes a little while um, I feel because the Cricut uh, transfer sheets they're very sticky so you just need to give it a bit of an oomph for it to be able to stick correctly and take your time because at this stage you know it, you can do it so there we go right so 
We're now going to stick it onto the laminating sheet, making sure that you're leaving enough space to cut the top off because that's going to be your opening and enough space for the bottom. So you're going to transfer it on, so you're going to give it a little rub again and then you're going to peel off the paper, the sticker bit. You're going to peel it off and I always reuse these so if you can stick it back to your original packaging you can keep reusing them until they lose their stickiness. So a roll will last me forever um, because you just keep reusing the little bits, little segments that you can. So here we go, it's all stuck on to my laminating sheet on the matte side. And there we go. Then you're going to cut around this part now, but you're going to cut it with the other laminated sheet together, which is a little bit tricky as you can see in a minute. Probably would have been better for me to do it on a guillotine. However, I didn't have it handy. So whatever you cut out here, this will be in your envelope. So if you cut a massive segment, that will be the size of your envelope. So I made the smallest error on this video and the last video, not the video that I did, but I did it too close to the edge. So I'd leave a little bit extra than what I have because it broke, because the seams were just too little. So you want it to be probably about, I don't know, 0.5 centimetres away from your vinyl so that it's got that little bit of a crust to stick to. That A is really bugging me. But just for a tutorial element, I thought I'd just keep going and it shows you to just be a little bit careful. Um, because I was so annoyed that I did it because I couldn't well I can still use it but it just doesn't look nice does it so so there we go I'm just trying to make sure that they're seamless together because they started moving around a little bit which got a bit tricky um, but yeah I would have I would have liked to leave a bit of extra room at the side so now you need another laminating sheet that you've not cut and you're going to laminate this part now so you're not cutting this one you're literally going to pull it inside and making sure you're leaving a bit of extra room for where you're going to actually cut it once it's all laminated so i pull it the right way up because the top bit is where you're going to cut you could probably fit three onto the laminating sheet but just for this purposes of the video i did one uh, bearing in mind your two sheets have to be stuck together um, so they have to be in line with each other otherwise they're not going to stick correctly and it's going to look really stupid that's the tricky bit Right, so now we're ready to pull it into the laminator. Any laminator will do. If you've got one in the back of your cupboard, go and get it out. I always use a protective sheet. It's just what I do. I've got a mink foiling machine, which I use for my foiling aspects, but it's just a laminator. So I use it on setting three. I put my laminating in and it does its job. Right, so you're going to get it out of your laminating pile. You're going to, whatever you cut around, if you cut too close to the edge, your original envelope will just start to open up. And if you see, when you make it yourself, you'll be able to see quite closer the lines that show. So that I'm just showing that it hasn't opened, but it does eventually open because I've cut it too close. Uh, when you do this, you'll be able to see the, the um, closed lines that it shows you. I'd, yet again I do probably 0.5 centimeters away from that line so you know that it's 100% it's not going to open but the top bit you want it to open so you're going to cut right on that line and you're going to chop it off because the top bit is the envelope part that you need to be open to be able to put your money inside I've also measured this and it fits perfectly inside my um, purse it opens up so you put all your money in there for the post office you pull it into your purse and there you go you have a purse envelope wallet made by yourself as in as that so here's here's me demonstrating that it fits um please if you like this video and it's helped you make one please comment down below and tag me in your creations at oxml studios 
on Instagram. I'd love to see. And have a fantastic day. Thank you so much for watching.